So I'm out here at the beautiful Heirloom Roses and I'm with Ben. And today, Ben, we are gonna be talking about uh, rambling roses specifically, right? Yes. So we are standing in front and this really covers this entire structure here. This is, what do we know what kind this is, the name of it's it? It's Alexander Geralt. Oh my goodness, and it's beautiful, lovely fragrance and just massive blooms right now. Yeah, it's a giant display of color. You know, this is the end of a garage, uh -huh. and so there's four roses planted along here. They're taking up about 20 feet wide by about 20 feet tall and starting to cascade over the roof now. And they're really, I mean, the, the, the time, they might not bloom for two months even, right? Correct. Or what's the bloom time generally? You know, generally? It's, it's generally two to three weeks yeah. in, in, the, in the beginning of the summer here. But can you beat this display? <laughs> I no. mean, this is breathtaking. It is grand. And one of the things I love about coming out here is there are a lot of, of different uh, roses like this in different parts of the, the gardens. Mm -hmm. Now, ones that a lot of us always see when we first come out here is a big, huge white one. It looks like it's 20 feet up in that tree. That's Paul's Himalayan musk, and it is growing right up inside of a black walnut tree there. And the fragrance is intoxicating as you walk under it. It's, it's really it's delightful. It's really glorious. Well, I want to talk about some other things about ramblers, but first I want to look at some more. So why don't we go to another place in the garden, take a look at some of those. That's great. Okay, Ben, I come around the corner and I see this beast behind us, and that's huge and massive. It's breathtaking. Yes, yes. So now we're also, that's one that we wanted to see, but right beside us, tell us the name of this beauty. So this is Francis E. Lester, and it's a nice cluster of blooms with a very light pink. I, I wonder, how does someone go along about pruning these kind of things? How do you yeah, guys do so that? So we uh, prune these actually very aggressively. This is one that we've just let go. It's, it's taken over an old dead pear tree. Perfect. And we've let it go. <laughs> but you, know, you can prune these very aggressively and shape these so that they can fit into a smaller yard. Sure, sure. But if you had a space, like if, let's say you have an old tree and you don't have a you know, few hundred dollars left to cut it down, you could do this to it and complete sure, it. Sure, sure. And it's not just the bloom time, although those might be smaller times than most roses, there's other things like the hips and stuff. Yeah, you know, this, this puts on really nice cluster of red hips, uh, which are kind of a fun thing in the yeah. fall and winter. You can cut them and use them in bouquets and they just look nice. And it's got good foliage. Yeah. It's really a nice looking, nice looking piece in the yard. So there is one more place on the other side of the street over here. Let's take a walk over there and look at that, okay? Great. Okay, Ben, now what part of the garden are we in right now? So we're in the north garden here where we have a lot of our older English roses and climbers as well as these ramblers. Yeah, and I, again, all make them go vertically rather than just allow them to go high as well. Right, this is one rose that we've trained along a fence line. And as you can see, as it moves up here, it's actually moved up onto a trellis. So it's yeah. a good demonstration of how you can keep it lower and really fill in, but also take over a trellis and, and really they're just very versatile plant. Now in my mind, I want to know what's the difference between climber and rambler? What, sure. How do you know the difference? Uh, cli climbers have a thicker cane that sure. gets more woody. Uh, ramblers tend to have a more supple cane that you can, it's pliable. You can actually move these around. Uh, many of the ramblers will have fewer, if not, if not no thorns. Wow. So uh, that's really nice when you're working with it on the trellis. Uh, so I would say that generally ramblers are actually more versatile than climbers. Okay. And they do have a, a bigger display of color once a year. So, you know, it's, it's a trade-off. Uh, many blooms versus one-time blooming. And, you know, I guess you could even, if you do have a space that you want, for a climber, you could do both, get the big flush of color from your rambler and then have long-term bloom from the sure, climber. Sure, sure. Many times we'll, uh, we'll, mix, we'll mix, mix climbers and ramblers together yeah. and just get a nice display of color. And of course, you have a great selection of ramblers available out here at Heirloom, don't you? That's right. We have an excellent selection of ramblers and right now, everything's in bloom. Wonderful. So it's about a two-week period of time. You really want to take advantage of it. If you're thinking that this might be something you want in your yard, come out and take a look at it while it's in bloom and, and get the full effect. And uh, let, me, let me tell you, nothing convinces you about the love of these type of roses until you see them in full bloom. They'll, they're absolutely breathtaking. For more information, you can always go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Heirloom Roses' website and then come out, visit them. Do it quickly, though, because the ramblers don't last forever. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you.